aloud is a huge priority in my home. So I would say among the two most important things that we do every day, reading aloud and math are the very tippy top. Um, so sometimes I read aloud just to my younger kids um, and then it's picture books on the couch. My favorite is when I'm reading aloud picture books and I look up to see that all the toddlers have you know, run off and the older kids are now reading the book over my shoulder. Um, sometimes it's just to my older kids. Um, especially if we've got Play-Doh or coloring or some kind of activity that they all can do. The younger kids can sit with us at the table. Sometimes the older kids will do Play-Doh with the little ones while I'm reading to them. Sometimes everybody's doing watercolors or painting or uh, coloring. It's a giant mess, but it's totally worth it. And I'll read aloud to the older kids with the younger ones present. Sometimes we wait until all the little ones are in bed, down for a nap or at the end of the day, and we'll read aloud then. But I definitely feel like even when it's too hard to play a game with my kids, too hard to enjoy them in a lot of other ways, especially after we've been homeschooling all day, it's very easy to enjoy them while we're reading together. Okay, I'm totally gonna turn tables on you because you do this to all your podcast <laughs> people. Um, You're not if you could choose favorite books. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the cruelest question that I... <laughs> okay, they don't have to be your favorite, but... Okay. <clears throat> Okay. She knew I exactly. can't. <laughs> I know. Because <laughs> they always cringe when you ask them that question. I know, so unkind. At which my girls have now asked me before, too, Mom, if we were stranded on a desert island and you could only take five of them. Oh, dear Lord. Okay. Um, and it's fair to do a series. You can say, like, the whole Little House series. Okay. So, okay. So, if you, had, if you could, if you were stranded on a desert island and you had to take five books to read with your family, what would you take? I would choose something that I think pretty much everyone loves are the Little House books by Laura Ingalls Wilder. My favorite way to read those aren't actually to read them, but to listen to them on audio. Cherry Jones does this amazing audio narration of all the Little House books. And I find those ones a little tricky to read aloud myself, but I love them. And my husband, when we listen to them in the car, he doesn't want them to be turned off. We all enjoy those so much. Chronicles of Narnia would be absolutely on my list. Um, I think. Reading the Chronicles of Narnia with my kids has been one of my favorite memories for homeschooling. One of my favorite read-alouds is The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. I was so surprised when I read that book at how much more delightful than the movie. It's not nearly as scary. Everybody got something fun from it, and we had some really, really good conversations uh, in our family about whether it was more important to have a heart or to have courage, for example. Um, th that was a really fun read-aloud. I love The Wing Feather Saga by Andrew Peterson. I think the work that The Rabbit Room uh, and the people at Rabbit Room are publishing, like The Wing Feather Saga, like The Wilder King Trilogy by Jonathan Rogers, um, The Angel Knew Papa and the Dog by uh, Doug McKelvey, they are some of the most important works that we're seeing come out of this time. I just love it when I find authors alive today who are making these beautiful works. I know they're going to be the classics of tomorrow, and I feel like we have this amazing opportunity as parents and families to basically rally around our own C.S. Lewis's and our own J.R. Tolkien's, and I think that's just one of my favorite parts about being a part of this sort of global world where we're all connected in technology, because we have the ability to learn from and support these artists that are doing beautiful work. When we started homeschooling, I didn't know anybody else who was homeschooling. It was sort of uncharted waters. I was hooked in online, so I knew other bloggers who were homeschooling, and I would read books at the library about homeschooling and think, I don't know, that kind of sounds intriguing. Mostly I think I was just curious. And then as we got closer and closer to it, I realized that I wasn't ready for to send my kids to school because I was just starting to really enjoy them about the time that it was to send them to school. I loved the connections we could make at home, and I was really excited about the idea of being able to give them the time and space they needed to create and investigate things that intrigued them and really run with their own curiosity. Um, by then, I had started working at a library, and it was really easy to pick out the people who walked in, the kids who walked in, who were homeschooled. They were really articulate. They would come up and talk to the adults without any inhibitions. They were researching all kinds of things that were interesting to them. And they loved it. I didn't meet any homeschoolers who didn't love it. And I thought, I think I want this for our family too. I think the greatest gift of homeschooling is the opportunity to really nurture family relationships. And we're able to do that in homeschools without sacrificing any of the friends and the social lives that I think so many people worried about 
back in sort of the dawn of homeschooling. Um, now we can see, frankly, for most of the homeschoolers I know, it's more about cutting back on your social activities so you can get to school then than it is about being able to fit in social time. I really believe homeschooling gives families one of the best opportunities to connect with each other and to make the kind of memories together and form the kind of relationships that we all dream about making with our kids. My husband thinks we were taking it year by year when we first started homeschooling, but I was pretty committed <laughs> at the beginning to going the whole way. Um, that was shaken a little bit when I realized homeschooling was harder than I anticipated. Uh, one of the first things I did when we first started homeschooling was read on every different kind of method and philosophy I could find. And so I felt very prepared in that I was very well read. But what happened is on one of the first times that we'd ever like sat down to really do school, I decided we were going to learn about ants. We were going to do this inquiry-based learning. So I put this uh, white piece of butcher paper on the wall and I sat my five and three-year-old daughters down and I had my Sharpie and I asked them, what would you like to learn about ants? And without missing a beat, my three-year-old scrunched up her nose and said, what happens to ants after they die? I realized at that moment, oh, we're going a lot deeper than I thought we were. <laughs> None of the reading that I did, not my ant farm or the music CD about ant songs or the books I'd gotten from the library, none of those are gonna touch this. And that was just the first time that I realized, oh, homeschooling is not just cut and dried math, science and reading, and there's a lot more that's gonna happen here. So I felt prepared, but that was shaken pretty much at the beginning and I realized there wasn't really a way to prepare for this lifestyle so much as it's like we have to just be ready and open for grace as soon as we get it because we always get it when we need it and never a moment before. One thing that I really treasure about homeschooling is that it gives my older kids a chance to spend a lot of time with the younger ones. So we have a pretty big age gap between our older kids and then their six years and then a whole nother set of kids. And it's been really beautiful to be able to see them share so much time together where the younger kids really, they expect to have the older ones around. They love having them around. There have been times where I have been caught up with something else and the older ones just step in. Um, it's just a really beautiful relationship. When the older ones are gone, you know, for day camp or something where they're gone for a long period of time, they really miss the little kids. And it's just really sweet to see that whole sibling relationship blossom. There is something about being in a convention hall with thousands of other homeschool families that is electrifying. It's sort of a, we're all in this together and look at how many of us there are. Sometimes you can feel a little bit alone or just isolated in your homeschooling, just like you can in any other part of your life. And being around other people who believe in the same thing you do and are willing to make the big financial and, and um, fam family sacrifices to make that happen, that's pretty awesome. Um, I think going to a convention, you want to go and get filled up. And so if you're ever at a homeschool convention and you're listening to a speaker or you're walking through that exhibit hall and you don't feel like it's making you feel like you can go home and rock this thing, then you probably need to pivot and figure out who you should be listening to there. Which speakers would really feed your soul this year? Um, which booths at the exhibit hall are going to really help you decide to pick what will best nurture your family because you can't do it all. And sometimes we go to these conventions and we feel like we're finding out from everybody how we're doing everything wrong. When every speaker I've talked to at every convention really goes out of love because they, they want to pour into these families who they know are doing this really important, wonderful work in their homes. You have everything you need to homeschool your children with unshakable peace. You'll never feel ready. You're never gonna feel like you just nailed it, like your homeschooling days are just smooth. That I've never met a homeschooling mom who feels like she's rocking it all the time. But this work is so important. And like everything that we do that is most important, it's gonna be hard and it's gonna be worth it. You've totally got this.